Have you guys done the drive through thing? Because I have. No, you have? Tell us about yeah. it. Oh, I do. I like to do it if I'm ordering, like, food for multiple people. So it's, like, a lot of food. I'd, I'll take five cheeseburgers and seven fries. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's all for me. I used to do it. Okay, way back in the day, there were these things called landlines. It's a strange telephone that connected to the wall. <laughs> Couldn't carry it with you. It had, to, it had to be connected to the wall. And you didn't know who was calling. Mm -mm. People would call and it didn't show a number. You just had to answer it to find out. It's crazy. I feel like a grandma right now. <laughs> but back in those days, we had what were called telemarketers. And that's one of my, that was one of my favorite things to do is because people would call and you don't know who's calling, so you pick up the phone. Hello? Uh, yeah, is your mom or dad home? Oh, they're not home right now. <laughs> they left me all by myself. <laughs> but are you going to talk to me? Uh, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> and uh, I'd had so much fun doing it, but one time I took it a little too far, and they almost called CPS. <laughs> We're going to get somebody there for you. I'm like, oh, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> Click. I was like... <laughs> Because he didn't like my joke. Um, do you ever do it? No. no. You will now. <laughs> <laughs> the my most I've ever done with a telemarketer, I didn't change my voice. I just told them that I had died. <laughs> it's like, Jamie doesn't live here anymore because she passed away, and I would really, really appreciate it if you guys would quit calling and asking for her because it reminds me every time. <laughs> and they apologized. It worked for a while. My friends and I used to prank call um, the Jelly Belly Company. <laughs> Specifically the Jelly Belly why, Company. Why the Jelly Belly Company? Because it was one of the only 800 numbers that we could find. It was 1-800-JB-BEANS. <laughs> <laughs> and we loved calling them because they were located in the South. And uh, we were in Connecticut. Yeah. So we d would just call to listen to them say, Hi, Jelly Belly! <laughs> We thought it was like the best thing ever. I was like 13 and really cool. <laughs> we still think it's, see, there's this, this place in Dallas called Garland. And it's like this strange little area where, you know, we don't have major accents. But when you go to Garland, like you cross that line and all of a sudden everybody talks like this. Yeah. How you doing today? Welcome to Garland. I'm like, it's still part of Dallas. Why do you talk like that? Like literally, like I lived at an apartment complex here. Line is here, like one block over. Walgreens, one block over. Like two blocks from my house. <laughs> Everybody in my apartment complex, hi, how are you doing today? Great to meet you. You go to Walgreens. Are you here to pick up a prescription? What kind of prescription? I'm like, why does everybody talk funny here? <laughs> how are you doing today, honey? Do you want to eat something? No, I want you to stop talking to me like that. <laughs> Garland. Garland. Is that where King of the Hills is based on Garland? It's like a combo of like Garland and Arlington and Rowlett and all of those places. Ugh. Rowlett, that is a real town. Rowlett. <laughs> and Rockwall. Rockwall. I do play Liz Thompson from Soul Leader. Wait, hold for applause. What was your question, or did, was that your question? A fate of who? Monsters. monsters. Because they're monsters. <laughs> That's why we're, aren't we all afraid of monsters? Oh, that's good. Well, that's why you're not in Soul Inc. Eater. <laughs> no, that would be why. The end of my question. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever had to do this. I had a character in Black Butler, and she has these really cool glasses, and not to spoil anything, I don't think it's a huge spoiler. Uh, in the Japanese, when she takes her glasses off, she sounds very different. And so I was like, hey, since we're doing this accent and everything, can I, like, really go different? And... Uh, and Ian was like, well, I don't know, uh, how different? And I was like, 
what if, what if she talks like this when she's got her glasses on and then all of a sudden she talks like this? Just regular standard British and everything is very smooth. But then I, he's like, okay, now here's the shtick though. Now she's got her glasses off and she has to put them back on. Can you go from one voice to the other? And I went, <gasps> let's find out. <laughs> So she's talking, and then all of a sudden, she just puts the glasses on. Yeah, it's like this. It's like. So anyway, as I was telling you, I thought that maybe we could just, you know, maybe talk about it a little bit. <laughs> Would you like to talk about it? That's fun. It was so much fun. Thanks. I kind of feel like we're the moms. I know, isn't this cute? It's like we're the moms, the girls. Our know, little baby so girls. Pretty today. Aren't they so pretty? I love it. Precious. Oh, Sorry. now we all have oh, microphones. Now we all have all right. Ow! There's a hand over there. Yes, I live tweeted it. Hello. I live tweeted about the live tweeting. Shit. I retweeted the live tweeting. I, was I retweeted a tweet that was following the live tweeting while I was tweeting. Yeah. yeah. Tweet. I was drunk. She was. <laughs> she was making fun of me while I was retweeting the tweet about the live tweet. With Eric. With Eric, yeah. Who was tweeting about the live tweeting tweet. And was also drunk. Yes. Tweet. Oh, drunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joel McDonald, who's the director, and Meow was live tweeting, and Ian Sinclair, who is Dandy, was live tweeting, and I wrote that episode, so I was live tweeting. Are you going to live tweet? Next week is your episode. I don't have cable. I don't either. That's why it was find cool to watch it does. here. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find a, a restaurant and be like, "Turn that TV on Cartoon Network." Yeah. Better yet, they's applause. about to say my words. And then she's gonna drink a lot, so I'll just tweet for her. Well, and that's why. I mean, I knew it was your episode, so I knew yeah. it was gonna be brilliant. So I didn't uh, have to watch it. You. But uh, the next, next week's episode good. is really it's funny. Really I funny. lucked out on my episode. I got. I got a really funny episode. I'm excited. So watch it, especially if you like zombies. Tsunami next Saturday. You should be watching. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then keep watching for Sword Art Online. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, yes. pip your shows, ladies. Oh. Pip your shows. And Soul Eater. And Soul Eater. And still Soul Eater. Yeah. And Blue Exorcist is coming in March to Tsunami. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Is it hard as women to find jobs as voice actors? It's hard to find a job as a voice actor in general. Yes. It's the second hardest industry to get into besides modeling. Um, and yes, the competition is way intense because there are always more females going out for roles as compared to males. But on the same token, there's a lot more women parts in anime. Mm -hmm. But there's still Especially a lot of Especially in comparison to film work and theater work, mm -hmm. there's, there are a lot more women in anime. I think that's why like people ask, how have you done so many? But I came in at a time when dubs were just like started rolling and they just started hiring actors. They were just using the friends and that are in the next room to let's dub some anime. You've never acted a day in your life. So they started hiring actors and then because I naturally sound like this, I played every little girl in the history of little girldom for like four years and then finally these ladies were born <laughs> and grew up. <laughs> and so then I didn't have to play every little girl because I have, and that's the thing too, because people ask me about Tia all the time because Tia Ballard came in, the whole reason she works at Funimation is she came in an audition for me. And everybody's like, you've got to kill her. She sounds like you. And r at that time at Funimation, I was the only, ah! um, And I was like, no, because there are so many roles in anime for women and especially for that I was like, I'd actually like to have somebody so that maybe I don't have to play the little girl all the time and I can do something different. So it's weird because like in general in theater and film and commercial voiceover, there aren't a lot of roles for women, but in anime, especially now with the harem show, yeah. Yeah. which I don't really like, but at the same time, hey, Light Bill, what's up? Yeah, fan service pays the bills. <laughs> And that's what's funny too, just so y'all know, like I've worked on a lot of older anime, but like not the original dub. <laughs> like I think somebody on one of those sites has me listed at like, Monica dubbed this in 1982. And I'm like, I was seven.
happen. Uh, <laughs> so no, but thanks. Uh, but Robotech, or the, the Macross, which was originally Robotech, I remember when I was a kid and Robotech was on television, I'm really dating myself, um, and I had a Lisa Hayes doll. And I remember having that Lisa Hayes doll. I didn't really know what Robotech was, but I thought it was cool. Um, years later, fast forward, and Matt just cast me as Misa Hayase, who is Lisa Hayes, and I had no idea. And I got in there, and I'm like, whoa! And it was really, really fun to go back to something because we were working on all this newfangled anime, and then we went back to that, and the story is so good. And I understand why it was changed for Robotech, but it was nice to see the original. So it was a good show. A funny story about that, though. When I started working on that show, I had just started working at Funimation, or I'd been working at Funimation for just a little while. And um, we do things differently. At Funimation, we do the beep method, which I think is industry standard, where you get like beep, 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 and you start talking on the imaginary fourth beep. At ADV um, and Sentai now, we do what's called the chase method, where we basically just watch the scene, and then we go back and just talk over the Japanese. So sometimes if they're a Japanese guest, I talk over them, and I don't mean to. It's subconscious. <laughs> oh, you're talking. I should be talking. Uh, but uh, because I just learned the beep method, we were working on Macross, and something in the background, like an alarm was going off. You know, on the ship, there was always something going off. And um, I was waiting, and, and I was supposed to say my line, and I missed it. And the director looks at me and goes, what were you doing? I'm like, I heard that beeping, and I was waiting for the third beep. <laughs> and he goes, ugh. <laughs> So now I have to like turn it off if I hear beeping. I'm like, oh no, wrong studio, wrong studio. But that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Ooh, Mondays. I may or may not be on West Coast time. I don't. I I feel like I could oh, be I anywhere in the world right now, because literally I like got off the plane and went to the hotel, and I don't think I've even been outside. Right. <laughs> It's like Friday. Like Jamie and I yeah. walked outside on we purpose did. today because we I was like, like I don't know, smart. remember what it feels like. Yeah, we, wa <laughs> we, we walked in the parking lot so we could feel the sunshine. It was uh, so nice. I, I was I'm like, oh, this yeah. is Miami. Hi. <laughs> I'm lacking in vitamin D majorly. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually when I audition, um, I choose a voice for the character. And I base it off of their personality and a little bit off their photo that we get along with it. But um, usually in the first session, the director and I will spend anywhere from like 10 minutes to, to half an hour just like deciding on a voice for the character and locking it in. So um, it's kind of like a collaboration between me, the director, and sometimes a producer as well. And it also depends what the Japanese actor sounded like because they want us to sound pretty close to the original. So, yeah. I like to try out things on my cat. <laughs> Because you always end up talking in a stupid voice to your pets. And then, and then I'll try and like uh, bring it into to studio and be like, hey, Tyler, can I try this one? And it usually doesn't work. But some one day, one day it's going to happen. And I'm going to really get to practice a lot at home with my little kitty cat. I personalize all the animals in my life. And <laughs> they have their own voices. <laughs> so uh, I discovered a little boy voice because my brother's dog, Chewbacca, he's like this big, and he either looks like a grumpy Chewbacca or a really happy puppy Chewbacca. <laughs> and so he's like, hey, hey, can I go outside? I want to go outside. Can we go outside? I want to go outside. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> so I was doing that, and, Lu and my brother, Luke, was like, uh, you know, like, that's pretty good. Boy, boy. I was like, oh, well, all right. Sweet. And my dog, her name is Leela, because she has one eye. Um, it doesn't work though. She's blind. <laughs> but she's, her voice, she's much more chill. Her voice is like doorbell rings. Uh, you gonna get that? Like, maybe? Thinking about it? Maybe? Or, hey, 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 I wanna go outside. <laughs> hey, 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 pick me up, put me on the couch. <laughs> That's Leela. I like Leela. She's, She's cute. adorable. Um, but my voice to her is also a tokusa purpose Um I I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. I think it's a blessing. Um, I work for for Funimation in, in Dallas, and then I also do a lot of work for Sentai, which is like the new ADD. 
it's the same people, different companies. Um, so I have a four-hour drive that I do at least once a month. And that four-hour drive consists of me in my car with my sunglasses on going, I wonder what it sounds like if I talk like that. Ooh, that's fun. Record that. Okay. Um, how high can my voice go? Like, just an idiot. So if you ever are on the stretch of freeway between Houston and Dallas and you see some crazy lady in her car, like, just, you know, doing stupid stuff and making crazy noises and laughing to herself, that's me. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> I like, I'm like screaming and I look like I'm really, really mad sometimes. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just talking to myself. And then <laughs> one time I did that be before a session and I like broke a tonsil or something. <gasps> like a lump developed in my throat because no. I screamed too loud. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, mood <laughs> really lighting. feels bad for me too. But yeah, the lights are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's that sounds horrible. painful. It does yeah. sound painful. Yeah. Like it's just like like I swallowed a hard candy and it just won't go down. No, no. Pass. Yeah. Oh. It healed after a certain time. I guess it just I don't know. I didn't know. Here's something they don't tell you is if you do a, a voice where you have to whisper a whole lot. I was playing Hyatt in Excel Saga. She talks really high and whispery. And I got a sore throat and I went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor and he's like, I think you have windburn on your oh vocal you cords you from whispering. Evidently, if you talk in a whisper for too long, and I was doing like eight hour days, you can actually like get your vocal cords all kinds of worn out. Oh. And I had to take two days off and not talk. And I'm like, I'm just whispering. It can be dangerous. I it's a dangerous that. job, folks. Yeah, so when you're, that's what yeah. they, just because I was a vocal major um, in school and um, in the old college. Yeah, they always said if you're losing your voice and you have to sing, like, don't whisper. Like, it's terrible for your voice. Like, it's what you naturally want to do because you're thinking, I'm saving my voice, but you're not. You're hurting it a lot more. Wow. So, you know, remember that, yes, it was there. people. Do you guys watch preview all the time? Because we do, I think. We watch preview, yeah, yeah. definitely. But oh, we watch preview before, like, when we've already been cast. But, yeah. uh, um, I mean, it depends. Uh, s Sometimes I, I will research and watch a couple episodes before an audition to get a general idea. But I mean, you can quickly forget that. And so you really sort of rely on, on the side and, and making your own interpretation because sometimes that's better. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, we can sound similar without mimicking the voice because a uh, imitation is, is never going to be the same thing as what we create with our own voices and our own personalities and our own acting ability as far as our creation of a character is going to be far more truthful in that situation than an imitation of something, someone we don't know. So, you know, we can get inspired from the voice, but it's certainly not something I think we're all trying to imitate. Yeah. Well, and I wonder too, I don't know about for you guys, do when you go to audition, do you just have sides and you don't hear any clips of the Sometimes character? Sometimes they they've started us sending us clips yeah. of the okay. Japanese. Okay. But like, I never try to sound like the Japanese person. I just choose to audition for people that have like the same tone as me already. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, because I think that, you know, because we don't hear the Japanese, like the director, when you're in an audition, they'll guide you. Like they might say, hey, it needs to be higher, it needs to be lower. And a lot of times we end up sounding like the Japanese. Like I'm sometimes surprised when I go in to record after I've auditioned because I'm like, oh, that does sound like me. Yeah. Oh. But we don't ever hear it ahead of time. And I think they do that so we don't try to just mimic what we hear, right. but come up with something different. I like this light show we're getting. <laughs> what? Yeah. what? Fancy. Hey. Yes, by tat. Woo. Oh, three part three part question. Oh, three part three question. Getting lights. intense. I love what it. It's all happening? ladies asking questions, and it's all like, I have a two part. I have a three part. <laughs> I have a four parter. She's got a holy trinity of questions. Uh, go for it, Zuri. This, con this convention mm -hmm. has been a lot of fun, in particular. I would say. <laughs> I like getting to meet, because um, just we all record individually. So we don't always get to meet the people that we've been working with. Like there's people that I've, you know, like I talked about, where it's kind of an incestuous world. You play somebody's sister, and then their mother, and then their dog, and then their brother. And you're like, I wonder what that person's like. And then you go to a convention, you get to hang out with them, and it's cool. And then we get to meet other people from other studios. Make new friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
And we work in such a weird, weird industry that it's nice to have people that we don't have to explain what we do. We can just go, hey, you guys, you know when that thing happens? Isn't that crazy? And they understand what we're talking about, and that's awesome. Yeah. This particular weekend, every it's been like, oh, great, great. let's all make new best friends. Yeah. Like yeah. the whole weekend, yeah. you know, with everybody. Everybody's been so cool. Yeah, we and I mean, we have like, we all go to a, a lot of them, and, and, and I think that you end up going, like, Jamie and I go to a lot of conventions together because of Panty and Stocking. Uh, Chris and Eric and I go to a lot of conventions together because of Dragon Ball. So you have the people that you see all the time, but then it's like, I know you, well, except for Jamie, because she and I like to hang out all the time, but the yeah. other guys, I'm like, I know you. I'm going to go hang out with these people I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to come along, you can come along, but if not, then I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> yeah, generally, if Monica and I are at a convention, it's kind of a package deal. Yeah. But it's like hanging out with two of the same people. Right! What? Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> I'm tired. My shoulders have a mind of their own. <laughs> Your shoulders are still awake. Yeah, they yeah. are. <laughs> Nothing else is. We're all trained actors. Like, that's part of our rep. That's what we do. That is what we're paid to do, is to be able to tap into that stuff quickly. So... Um, you know, it, it's it's our job to be prepared like that. So it's not something that necessarily you're, you're like, okay. I mean, some people are like this. I'm not like this where you're like, okay, there's a sad scene coming up and I'm going to go be depressed in the corner for half an hour. <laughs> like, you know, we act. And so that's that it's it, we're playing a game and sometimes the game is sad. But generally, I think that as long as you're truthful in the moment, it comes pretty easily to you. Yeah, yeah. ditto. I actually enjoy the sad scenes a lot, oh. right? It's like so fun to so cathartic. Yeah. I like them because sometimes, like usually, it's so heightened, yeah. so it's almost like acting in a telenovela. It's like y it's <laughs> it's upsetting or sad, but it's not just like oh that's sad. It's like sad. Yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome because as actors on stage and on film, they want everything to be so realistic, and then you get in there and like I can finally be that dramatic woman I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, my favorite direction recently has been, what's, I mean, it needs to be more dramatic, a little more dramatic. I was like, like a telenovela? <laughs> <laughs> and the director was like, yes. So every time I read something, it would be like this. <gasps> we have to go now. <laughs> that was really fun. It's so much fun to do. I'll tell you the show, and then you do it, because it's perfect. Oh, sad to see. Mm. Definitely when Sugu <coughs> finds out the real identity of Kirito. <laughs> oh my god, my heart broke for her. Yeah, it's like, so she's, oh actually I shouldn't give it away. You can tell us later. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I was, like, I was like, no girl should ever have to go through heartbreak like that. It, it was Aww. bad, yeah. Which means we all probably do. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just yeah. talk about show in general? Um, mine was uh, in Wolf Children. Mm. Yes. Three people are weeping in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. I mean watching that whole movie is like that the whole time. Yes, but the scene in the car with my mom, where she just loses it, like <laughs> it was that was hard. Like it was, yeah. Because I mean, I I think I did several takes, and it just I was like, okay. I I really I think. Because I'd done two movies in a row with, with Mike McFarland where the characters were super emotional and like horrible things were happening and whatever. And I was like, Mike, you like to make me cry. <laughs> I think that's your MO. <laughs> but that one for me, yeah. Uh, I think for me, this goes way back and you guys probably haven't seen it. Has anybody seen Generator Gall? You should watch it. It's really good. It was Vic Mignogna's first lead role, if you're into that. Uh, <laughs> it's also a lot of other people's. There's, there's some really great people in, in it. Jason Douglas is in it. But I play this character that, by some unfortunate events, and she has uh, this monologue. There's no flaps. It's all voiceover. And it's basically a suicide. And so, but reading this letter and like talking about it and everything, and it's like she's talking about her friendships and all this kind of stuff. And it was just, it was the first time I had to do something really dramatic behind a microphone. And I learned very quickly that y sometimes you have to hold yourself back because otherwise, <laughs> everything you do sounds like this, and I don't understand what you're saying. So I learned, had to learn how to hold back a little bit, but it was really, that was brutal. Also, 
the end of Michiko, there was a moment where there was one line, Bevins didn't tell me anything, and I, I was like, what's happening? Oh, how happy. <gasps> and it just I like, started welling up, and he goes, what's wrong? And I'm like, I wasn't expecting this. He goes, that's the whole point, use it. And I'm like, okay. But she's nothing like me, so I had to be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I always end up having some sort of emotional breakdown. Um, Kana had some crazy stuff. Well. Kana has some crazy stuff. Yeah, she does. And then also um, Witchblade, the end of Witchblade. It's pretty intense. Um, Spice and Wolf, Chloe's conversation with Lawrence where she's talking to him about her feelings and he has no clue. That was hard. That was fun. And then also in that particular one, I was directing that episode, and so when Michael Tatum was recording it, I just stopped doing the beeps and, w and read the scene with him, and it was awesome. It was so cool, because it was just us performing the scene, and he figured out what I was doing really quickly, and we just read the scene together, and most of what he did, that take, is what we used. And so then when I went back and recorded it, it was really easy for me to like have that sense of memory and go back where I was emotionally there. So that was really, that's just another cool experience. But the most would be at the end of Burst Angel. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when I cried. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, the, uh, so the thing about, do you guys, who knows Burst Angel and knows what I'm talking about? Okay, so there's a, there's a very emotional scene that my character has about her character basically leaving her. And they were going to run off together, and now she's leaving, and she's... You know, so she feels kind of betrayed, and she had, and I had recently had a relationship that had ended in a very similar way. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it was a very hard moment to just either I'm either going to have to just go for it and let myself tap into that, or not, and it's not going to be truthful in the moment. So I just let it tap into it, and that whole snotty thing happened, but it worked really, really well. The thing that you may not know is in the middle of it, a tour came through. <laughs> like, of people who were just touring Funimation. And I'm like, snotty and tears and mascara and, <laughs> you know. And um, Christopher Bevins knew everything that was going on and was laughing at me. While I hid in the partition, like nobody could, because there are windows, and I hid in the part that wasn't, and then I would step forward <laughs> for a little bit, for a few lines. But yeah, even in the commentary, if you listen to the commentary of that, like it gets real quiet during that scene, and you hear Allison Victorian say, I feel that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I did too. Or it's not, it's not Victorian anymore. Well, and then there's a, the shot of the scarf. Yeah. <gasps> After yeah. all of that, and then you, oh. Such yeah. a good show, you guys. It is a really good show. And it's also the first time at the end of that show is when I first met Monica. Woo! And uh, everything started. She <laughs> thought I sounded like that. I thought she That's sounded like awesome. Joe. Like this. That's what I had heard. So when I met her, she said, Hi, Jamie. I was like, who is that? <laughs> who is that person? I'm Joe from First Angel. I'm what? Joe. And you were there with Miguel? Brother. Yeah. Miguel Angel. <laughs> What's your Oh. Um, <laughs> mine is probably either the, I think, episode 10 of Madoka. <laughs> because you find out what Homer is really doing and why. I know. The same feels. weepers. I like and, <laughs> and also, the, like, I really cried at the end of um, k -On when everybody, like, graduates and leaves me behind. Oh, that scene made me tear I, up. Like, I couldn't even hold it back anymore. Like, <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm acting, I'm acting. And then it just like <laughs> fell out and it was, yeah. Because it felt real. Like not even an yeah. emotional show either. It's I just know. like, we're all graduating later as is that. I know, and then I like ball and I'm like, don't <laughs> leave me. <laughs> yeah. so, this is going to be like the end of the notebook in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the shows we do are pretty over dramatic, well, over the top. And we I guess. worked as directors, so we got to see all kinds of actors doing really, really crazy, stupid things in the booth, and it was awesome. Yeah, we both have held auditions. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Sorry, th I, it made me think of, have you all seen Kenichi the Mightiest Disciple? It's a bunch of dudes, right? And I just started directing at Funimation, so I had every dude ever that I had never worked with come in, 
And there was <laughs> one of our older actors that has, I guess, difficulty reading. I didn't know at the time, but he came in and he took the script and changed it on his own. And the line was something like, oh, I hate you karate punks. You make me want to puke. And what came out was like, oh, karate puke hate. Oh. And I was like. <laughs> 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 and me and my engineer, because you don't want to laugh because he sounded great. But I was like, what are you saying? But we were sitting, like, the way that studio was set up is that the actor's right there, and we're right in front of him. So my engineer, which was Kyle at the time, we were both, like, sinking into our chairs <laughs> behind the <laughs> monitor so we could be like, what the? <laughs> and they were like, thank you. That was wonderful. We ended up using him, but... In, <laughs> in my mind, at that time period, Kyle was cutting his hair. So in my mind, he was in the chicken hawk phase. And so I just see this chicken yeah. hawk. <laughs> Sticking over the table. <laughs> kind of w wiggling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Klondike bars. I mean, bars. they're all right. They're I don't really, I've never, maybe I've had like a Klondike bar once. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do anything for a Klondike bar. Right? right? <laughs> I feel like, take You're your Klondike yeah. bar and get on my face. You're not yeah. Yeah. You know what? There are a lot of sweet treats. Yeah. There are a lot of sweet. Now, if we're talking Thin Mints, that's a different story. Ooh. Or French macarons. Oh. <laughs> Or or a Monica Real cupcake. Oh, hey. oh. Oh. Hooker cupcake. can bake. <laughs> my Elvis cupcake. Oh my god. Get Elvis ready cupcake. for Even this. Even your strawberry. I want. It's banana cake, banana cinnamon cake. What? With a peanut butter cream cheese icing. Oh, I'm what? Oh. <laughs> I'll make it without peanut butter. We'll make almond butter, almond butter, butter icing. And then you drizzle it with honey and put a piece of candied bacon on oh top. Oh, my God. Banana. Although, I will tell you, for Halloween, she made peanut butter cup cupcakes. <gasps> yes. It was a chocolate cupcake with peanut butter cream cheese icing. Mm -hmm. And inside was a Reese's peanut butter cup. So you mm. bite into it. And then in the middle of the cupcake <laughs> was a peanut butter cup. See, I'm trying to cut it's down amazing. on eating them, so I make them for other people. Because yeah. then I can watch you guys gain the 15 oh, pounds, sorry. and I just go, <laughs> "Wasn't that good?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> um, can I just can I just tell you guys that Iron Man just got here? Where? Hey. Holy what? shit! <laughs> if there's yeah. an RDJ in there, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love Iron Man. <laughs> oh. Now I want a cupcake. <laughs> Tell your friend she can suck it. Now I want an <laughs> RDJ. I think that, I mean, I'm happy. I, I think that we all, I mean, I can't think of a single show I've done that I didn't like. So I'm happy that people like it. But there are shows, and I usually am not one to just be like, you should watch this show. But there are shows that when people ask, they'll be like, what's the one anime that you want people to see? And I go, Corral Phantom Memory. And nobody's heard of it, right? You should all watch it because it's absolutely gorgeous. Or shows like Michiko and Hotchin, shows that like really, really tear you up inside and you're like, this is really good and different. I know that Negima's fun, but why don't you just put that down for a moment and have a life-changing experience? <laughs> because the harem show will always be there. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. What are some of your like most underrated shows like if you could tell all these people like it's great that you like one piece and it's great that you like sword art but what is the one thing that nobody's watched that That's you think is question. Question. i always this this happens online a lot more because i'm never i'm never annoyed i'm always just like grateful and happy and all that business that that you guys watch any of our stuff thanks um but um we do like to i will throw it out there for michiko and hachin again but i feel like that's getting out there but um there's a, so, a show called shangri-la Nope. So there you go. Yeah. Um, it's really, really good and different and weird. And it has Kent Williams, like, as a transvestite. who And he's, like, amazing. I don't know. It's really, really cool. So that's the one that I would say check it out if you haven't yet. It's really, really cool. Me and Cassandra were in a movie, like, when I first started called Oblivion Island. And I get really excited whenever people bring that up. It's actually distributed by Funimation. But... Yeah, yeah like not a lot of really people good. know it, but it's like really touching, and the animation is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like production IG's first. Uh, it was 3D, so yeah, yeah. It, it's like Toy Story, and it like or what is what would you call it? It's like Alice in Wonderland meets Toy Story. Yeah, Aww. it's about like not forgetting your forgotten things, because then somebody will take them because you took it for granted. Aww, it's so cute. Really Me cute. too. It's really cute. So you should watch it if you guys get yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. 
Also, um, has anybody heard of First Squad? Oh, One. Woohoo! One, two. Okay, cool. It's actually a Russian anime, and um, it was the first thing that I'd ever done for Bang Zoom where I had like the lead role, so I was like super excited. Um, so I'm this like 14 year old psychic girl named Nadia, and it's during like World War II, and she gets like kidnapped, and it's a little, it's it gets really dark, but it's really exciting. So like yeah, I was like really excited about that, like for that to come out, but then it didn't really do anything. But um, the people that have watched it, they really enjoy it. So check out First Squad. Yeah. I have um, a couple, one that I'm in and one that I wrote. So the one that I wrote. Uh, that I love, it's super quirky and super funny, um, is called O Edo Rocket. And it's a, it breaks the fourth wall constantly. The, the Japanese is, the anime is based on a play. And in the Japanese, it's very self-aware that it is based on the play. So our dub is very self-aware that it is a dub based on a Japanese anime that is based on a play. <laughs> and so there are a lot of inside jokes. It's really, really funny, and I like that one a lot. It was so much fun to write. And then... Uh, Bloss Rider is one that I'm in that I feel like more people should see. I really like it. And there was a late night panel. It was my first late night panel, and it was at Oticon, which I don't know if you know about that, but that is there were 30,000 people at that one. And they're like, come do this. And I'd never done one of those like 11 o'clock at night, flip a coin, ask people anything. And there were jumbotrons where they would zoom in on your face. And everyone could see when they asked you about your favorite, mm, you know, position or whatever they were going to ask you. So that was really embarrassing. Oh. That, I can't believe they just threw you to the wolves like that. <laughs> they didn't warn you or anything? Well, it, well n I mean, Todd was there, so he was pretty distracting. He would take off his shirt and whatnot. So there was that. It's pretty much the reason he does those. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is happening. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not easily embarrassed. In fact, I, I usually challenge people. Like, go ahead, try. Yeah. Like, really. But there was, uh, there's a director, a Japanese director named Akitoro Daichi, and we were doing uh, an OVA, and he came over, and we went to SakuraCon, and he had a book. Like, it's a translation book where they show you the picture, and then it has the Japanese kanji, and then it has, like, the romanized Japanese, and then it has the English word, so that people can, like, point at things if they need to say. So I was looking through his book while, while we're talking through a translator, and I noticed that there's this whole section where it's like parts of the body. And then it had bikini line, which I guess if you're going to a spa and you need to be like, I would like this waxed in Japanese and, or whatever. So I was like, how funny, it says bikini line. The rest of the weekend, whenever I saw Mr. Daichi, he'd be like, oh, Genki bikini line. <laughs> and I'm like, and everybody's like, did he just call you bikini line? <laughs> but it's more like a bikini line. -er. <laughs> I was like, oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> he was funny. I am also not easily embarrassed. Um, I can't really even think of anything. I mean, when I came in the building today, Jade was with me and my skirt flipped up because of the wind. <laughs> but then I was like, whoop, hello. Um, I can't even think of anything that yeah. was. I'm sure to be like hor horribly embarrassed as soon as I leave here now. Cassandra yeah. pointed out some guys and then I tripped all over her. <laughs> <laughs> that happened here. I was like, okay, never flirt with Christine. I'm not good at or it. never use her as a wingman. <laughs> yeah. And I say that out of love. I was like, oh, there's that guy. And she literally, let's do a reenactment and then we'll end the panel. <laughs> so what okay. So we're coming out of my room. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the con. <laughs>